So yeah, that's the uh, new cigar box guitar. I'm working on one more. I've got all the parts for one more, and I'm going to make it a little better than this one. I don't think it's going to be perfect, because no cigar box is ever supposed to be perfect. But <clears throat> the goal is to make it just slightly better than the one we've got here. This one sounds nice, though, sometimes. for making this cigar box guitar. Let's talk about that. That'll be cool. So this is my very first attempt. It's a very haphazard, um, thrown together thing. So I'm gonna show you all the mistakes that I made so that you will hopefully not make them. So my initial thought was, you just take a chunk out of the cigar box and stick the piece of wood through it. And that really does work. I don't actually, that's not a mistake. I still suggest doing that because it's, it's a good way to do it. If you can get bracers of wood, little shims, to go here and here, right? So that they, gosh, I'm, I'm not good at fucking camera vlogging on a webcam yet. Okay, so if you could put a shim in here and a shim in here just so that you have something to screw this down with, that's a great idea. This cigar box happened to be really nice because back here there was already a shim. There was a piece of wood here because... I think the box had like one less cigar than you would think the box could hold by like weight value or whatever. So there was a, there's a little block of wood in here just in this corner. And so I was able to screw the this neck in right there. So there's a screw here. That leads me to the first point, which is that I should have made this a little bit deeper because it does bow. You can't really see it. It's not very easy to see, but... The box itself is just ever so slightly bowed because the screw is in there and the wood doesn't really fit quite as well. So I should have cut this a little bit deeper. So make sure you do real nice precision on that. With this, there's there's a gap here. I don't even really care about that. I think it's nice. In fact, some sound comes out of there and I don't really, I'm not tripping on that. Um, <clears throat> bridge, this uh, this nut with a, this bolt with a nut on it is a great one if you can find one where the uh, where the nut and the bolt are the same, like the nut head and the bolt are the same size. Perfect. Could not be better. I did not need to dig a, uh, a, a nut spot. I, I was going to put a spot here for the nut so that I could stick it in and it would just rest. Didn't need it. Uh, you can actually just kind of lay it on there and it'll just be fine. Although I do think what I'm going to do with the next one is make a, is make a nut groove, but like a lot less because I went crazy on this one trying to get it perfect and instead I went way too deep so it doesn't raise if I put the nut in there it literally won't raise the strings enough which brings me to the, another point which is the strings can be as high as they need to be which is awesome because you're playing if, for me I'm playing with a slide so this there's no frets here this is this is the poorest of the poor man's way to do it so I'm playing with a slide which means I'm not pressing these all the way down anyway You see how little, like I'm not even pressing it down. It's not going to the neck at all. The neck is just there to support the headstock and keep the strings taut. So, <clears throat> keep, 
keeping them nice and elevated. They can be as elevated as they want. Um, so I had this cool idea because I, I found really cheap um, tuning pegs, right? And they're for an acoustic guitar. It's supposed to be three on each side, and then it makes a real nice acoustic guitar head. So I thought that would work here. It's very wonky. As you can see here, my high string is really struggling to stay in this groove. Sometimes it pops out, throws me off to you, not good. If you're going to do it this way, if you want to go with the cheap route and do the uh, do the three in a row, that's totally fine. I would just recommend, and actually this is China's idea, so shout out to China for being a genius. Um, you just put a screw right here to hold the string out so that the string can push around the screw and there's not quite so much tension on here. I'm going to end up doing that with this one. In fact, I'm going to put a screw here so that it, it doesn't have that weird, you can see there's a lot of weird tension right there. And if I had a screw like right here for this to wrap around, there would at least not be that tension on the nut. So then as you can see too, like my nut's not, not straight. That's another fun thing. The nut and the bridge don't actually have to be straight. In fact, my bridge also, I didn't realize, but I spray painted over a sticker and then my bridge, the bolt is, or the nut is stuck on the sticker. And so it's actually sliding around and creating this gap of paint, which is, I don't really care. I think it's kind of cool looking, but whatever. Um, the thing is, when it first slid, it of course threw me off tune. So you gotta like, you gotta really let everything settle in and then tune it up. Next thing is, I thought that this was the best spot for the volume because I've played a lot of guitars where the volume is on the bottom, but if it's on the bottom, you want it to be on the outside, back by your hip. Because I didn't think about it, I'm strumming into the volume knob a lot, and I don't want to do that. I don't mean to smack my hand. So with this one, I've just gotten used to strumming way up here because it's a cigar box and you strum it wherever you want. I could strum it way down here, and that'd be fine. It's just I realized now I should have done it somewhere else. So I was thinking about putting it on here for the next one, but I would still end up strumming up into it. So maybe I will put it down here. It's just tricky because I like to put the jack here. Although I could put the jack a little closer to the middle, I could potentially put it in the bottom. I see now why the other one had one in the bottom. It was infuriating for me when I first started trying to play the, um, the old one because I would plug it in and it's like there's a jack coming right out of here. And so you can't really set it on your knee quite as easily. But I realize you, you normally play these between your legs like this. And so it's perfect that way. And actually coming straight out the back did make it a little tricky because I can't rest it on my other knee like this. So it's a trade-off. It's really about however you're going to sit, <clears throat> you get to choose. But then my next point is this. Um, I immediately looked at this jack and I was like, oh man, I don't know if we're even going to have a drill bit that that's, that's that size. And so instead of doing the smart thing and drilling a hole that's as big as I could get it and then filing it to, to the size that I could put that in, because if you see, there's still a nut in there. You see that nut right there that's wrapped around this thing? See the hexagon that's wrapped there? That's a that's a legit, like, it's a nut, actual, like, screw-on nut. And it's supposed to secure that thing to the wood. So that nut and the washer go on the outside of the cigar box, and the threads poke out, and you screw it on there tight so that it's actually, like, screwed to the cigar box. What I did was I took a boring tool and I just bored a big asshole that was just slightly too big. And then I literally just super glued the shit out of that thing. So there's just a bunch of super glue in there. So that was the next thing that I would say is make sure that you have just the right size. If you don't have the right size, go a little smaller and just take the time to actually sand the hole bigger. Don't try to go for some crazy big thing because then you have to work on a fix, which is not good. <clears throat> the other thing that I did not prepare for is that these have to have grommets. I need to get grommets for these still to this day. I'm going to end up pulling these strings off and putting some grommets in there because as you can see, the amount of like tautness that you need to, um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be in the back, but you need grommets in the front and I'll show you why. So these nodules hold the strings for most strings. Some strings don't have them, but I recommend getting like the uh, Ernie Ball Slinkies, the pink ones, they're the best for cigar box guitars, for pretty much any guitars that are electric. Um, <clears throat> but then up here, let me see if I can get a good shot here. Then up here, you need grommets. As you can see, the strings are already working through the wood and the more that I, um, tune them up, the more they will dig into the wood. And eventually it could become a point where like they don't even hold or just for whatever reason, they're just crap. And so I, I want to make sure that I get that. You can actually already see the strings are starting to touch the cigar box lid. And that's going to end up creating weird grooves there too. So I want to make sure to get some metal grommets here 
And then I might actually, once when I take the strings off, what I'm going to do is remember to pull this sticker off before I put the, the bridge back down because I don't want the bridge sliding around on that sticker. That's actually fucking me up. But <clears throat> with all of those mistakes, volume knob in the wrong spot, this hole too big, no grommets, a sticker on here, the final mistake that I will say is I spray painted it, which is fine, but if you're gonna spray paint it, you need to make sure that you have some kind of sealer so that your hands don't feel weird. At the very least, I probably should have just like left this outside to dry for many, many days, but it, it dried for about maybe six hours, and then I brought it home and kind of put it in my living room, and I was like, eh, it'll just dry in here. Indoor drying with spray paint is not the same thing as like drying in the wind and the sun. It's really good for spray paint. So either let it dry really good or just don't, don't spray paint it. I think I'm going to end up doing something else with, uh, with my next one. I'm not going to spray paint it. I'm just going to do all kinds of weird sticker stuff with it or something. But spray paint was my last one. Anyway, what I was saying is with all of those mistakes, oh, one more mistake. I think I already explained it to you. The piezo pickup disc is a tiny microphone, essentially. It picks up vibrations and turns it into binary electrical signals, which is how you get the vibrations for most guitars, but like that's what the piezo does. It's a little tiny wafer uh, circle with a wire coming out of it that they solder on. For mine, it went to a volume knob. Sometimes it just goes straight to the jack, but I like that it went to a volume knob and then a jack. So we got a piezo already pre-soldered with a volume knob and with a jack. And I glued the disc, just kind of thinking, it's a little microphone, it can go anywhere. I glued the disc to the inside top of this part. So it's it's right up here. It's like, it's like this. And then the wire goes down behind the neck piece of wood. It goes back here to the volume. And then it goes over here to this. And once I was done, I was like, all right, screw it, I'm done. So I screwed it shut. <laughs> the screw was too long. It pokes out the back. I'm going to have to put some kind of pad on that so that I don't have scratches on my hip while I'm playing it. Um, so this is the most jank, like, first edition, first try at my cigar box. But even still, that's what I was trying to say, is that even with all these mistakes, with no grommets, the hole is too big, the volume knob's in the wrong spot, there's a sticker here, I painted it all wonky, the bridge and the nut it took like a little bit of time to settle, and they settled crooked, the freaking tuning pegs aren't really in the best configuration to make the strings work, and yet, somehow, I can still carefully plug it in, and like... <laughs> still works, which is pretty amazing. is that I should have definitely put the piezo somewhere a little closer to the strings. I don't, I've seen people who like take a boring tool and they bore a nice hole in the wood of the neck here and they put it like right about here so that they can have the piezo disc where a, where an actual pickup would be. I don't think that's necessarily like necessary because the, 
the disc itself is so sensitive. Hello, hello. I don't know if you can tell, but like, that's a sensitive disc that picks up any vibration at all. So what you really should do is just glue it somewhere. Maybe I think the next time I'm gonna glue it to the back side of the stick, somewhere down here. But even there, like you can hear, hear how sensitive these things are. Piezo pickups are very sensitive. Thank you.